Hi, I'm Randolph Miller, and welcome to Bounce Around Charleston. Can you see the excitement on my face? Well, I have a wonderful show for you. I have Chandler Moore, Brandon Lakes, and guess what? Even Bishop Brian Moore will be here to talk about the relationship between a father and his son. All that for you, right here on Bounce Around Charleston. Hi, I'm Randolph Miller, and welcome to another Bounce Around Charleston. Yeah. Standing here with me, Chandler Moore yes. and Brandon Lakes yes. of Maverick, and they're here to tell us all about why they're here in the Low Country. Yeah. Welcome to Charleston. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, Brandon lives here. I live here. I'm this from is home. here, so this is this is welcome back home. Uh, with Rev Miller. Hey, hey. We, I'm going to have to put a side-by-side -side video of my last interview, which was, what, six years ago, maybe? That's right. This is crazy. Wow. Uh, we're here in Charleston at the Mother Emanuel. Yeah. Just such a sacred, humbling place to be. Uh, recording new music uh, with the legend, Kurt Franklin. Yeah. Uh, and we're recording some new songs, trying them out with a choir here. Everything's local. Everybody's local here. So this is our Very gift. Special. Yeah, our gift mm -hmm. back to our city where we grew up at. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I uh, grew up here, and so to be back, um, there was actually a few years I went to Virginia, and um, when the shooting took place, I was in Virginia. Mm. And I remember one of the, the key reasons why we moved back is because of mourning in a different city, in a different state, when it was my people. I felt like my community, it, it so like convicted us, and it, and it moved us to want to come back and be with the people that our heart burned yeah most for and so um that actually what is kind of was a, a big yeah. reason why we moved back a few years ago both of you did you ever think that you'd be where you are today no not at all i not mean all. standing where i am today physically and just even just career wise uh i mean we just i grew up as a little boy in charleston we really wanted to play basketball and i didn't really care about music <laughs> uh but once music came and growing around you know church life center my dad being pastor ground crazy musicians mm -hmm way more talented than anybody I've ever seen. Uh, growing around that environment, I guess it's kind of embedded in you. Uh, just the, the, the capacity of what you can hold musically, but also what God can do when you're just such under great, good people, just good-minded people. Yeah. I, I never, never thought about a Grammy, never thought about recording in front of you know, all these people going on tour with Kirk Franklin. It's just like stuff yeah. you can never think of. It's never fathomed. That's crazy. Yeah. What does it feel like to receive it? to receive a Grammy? Oh, are there words for it? I don't know. Man, um, for me, it felt like a, a huge, like, <sighs> because we've been working sure. so hard. Sure. If for you're sure. familiar with Mav, we put for out a sure. record about once a month. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And uh, sure. a lot of records, like last minute, like, let's get together, here's like, this, this spot. Last minute, we decided this so two last days minute. ago. I, I'm texting people <laughs> literally last night, can you show up tomorrow, we need vocalists. <laughs> And uh, we're still figuring out what yeah, songs we're doing exactly, tonight. Yeah. And so in a, in a way it was like, it was just a really sweet moment. Like sure. it's not what, why we do this, sure. but it was a really sweet moment of affirmation from kind of the greater music community sure. saying, hey, we see your hard work yeah. and we want to reward you for that. So how did you all put the group together? Well, it started off as a writing group. I mean, if you ask different people and it started off- Different on points, onboarding points. <laughs> completely yeah. different ways, but it started as a writing group. I found as Tony and JJ. Uh, got a, a whole bunch of different people together, white, black, Indian, Hispanic, people who don't look alike, and sat us around uh, a table, would you, if you would say, and just we just got to know each other, got to write songs together that yeah. I got to write people I would never have written songs with ever before, mm -hmm. just because of different cultures and the barriers, but yeah. we came together and knocked all those barriers down, and Maverick City happened just kind of, and it's still happening. In a, yeah, absolutely. We're still to it's evolving. It and, yeah. and one thing that our founder, Tony, uh, says is, you know, the kingdom of God is present when the table gets wider. Yeah. And I think that that's what we're doing. Our table is just getting yeah, wider and sure. wider. You're going to see sure. new faces and for new sure. songs. And so sure. we gather. And the beauty of how this was created, it was having conversations about race sure. mm -hmm. and how the white church, black church, mm -hmm. none of us are really killing it. Like yeah, we're yeah, not yeah. like doing amazing at it so yeah. how do we have conversations about being the answer the solution to that but let's do it in the context of writing songs yeah. and actually create something together and allow that to be the answer yeah. and the thing that blurs the lines between white black whatever genres, culture whatever yeah. genre yeah. ccm gospel yeah. mainstream pop whatever like let's blur the lines like let's not be so like i guess subjected to these labels you yeah. know how are you inspired to write the song gyra Man, uh, 
Well, a lot of a lot of the start came from Pastor Furtick, who's a genius in his own. But uh, I mean, it, it came out of a place of realizing that the Father's love is not something that can be earned. It's not something that you can perform for, and nothing you do is going to change that. I mean, those first, that whole first verse is the song wrapped in like four lines. So the song came out of a 10 hour writing session that-, <laughs> that In a uh, basement. In a basement, <laughs> uh, which is, you know, the album's called Old Church Basement. So it's kind of privy mm -hmm. to that. But that song just came out, you know, the Lord provides mm -hmm. love, he provides everything we need. He dresses the lily scripture with beauty and splendor. How much more will he clothe us? So yeah. the song is just about the provision of God. It's the provision of God. And what's happening here at Mother Emmanuel? Gyra. It's this, I feel like, What's happening here is the provision of God for the city, for uh, even for the people. I feel like this is either another, another. Uh, a lot of things have been done to the city to help this effort, to help this church. But I feel like this is another wave of the Lord's provision for Mother Emmanuel. And the reminder that the gyra means to see. It's not as much to provide as it was to see. And I feel like the Lord is reminding Mother Emmanuel, Emmanuel reminding the city, I see you. I hear you. Yeah. I'm, I'm the one who rewards those who dil diligently seek you. All of those things. Yeah. That's what I feel like is happening. And I think for me, too, uh, being a white guy, yeah. Mav has changed my life. Yeah. I grew up in Charleston, mm -hmm. uh, historically a pretty racist place. And I have had, unfortunately, um, ways of thinking that it wasn't my fault, but I grew up a certain way. Not in my direct family, but growing up around people that look like me, think like me, they'll say things that maybe even be a joke and then as a kid that starts to wire your brain a certain way. Sure. And Maverick, by getting around a table with people that don't look like me, talk sure. like me, think like me, but are going after the same thing, it's literally uprooted preferential treatment in my life. That's my testimony with Maverick City is it's made me, it's literally gotten anything that was close to racism and it's gotten it out of me. And it's, it's given me a better picture of what the kingdom of God looks like, which is family, but not family that looks like each other. And so I think for this recording and this moment, for me, I'm hoping it provides opportunities for people to see the accurate depiction of what the kingdom of God looks like, that everyone is welcome, everyone is represented. And I hope that what has taken place inside of me can do the same for others. As I stand here with both of you, I can see the fellowship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's true fellowship. Yeah, yeah. for sure. All of this, I feel like the reason our music connects with a lot of different people around the world is because what you see is what you get. It's very authentic, nothing is forced, even from the music to the lyrics, to the fellowship, to the choir. Yeah. Not everything is like, hey, let's just get the most realist, authentic uh, moment or vibe we can get. So I feel like that's, that's what it is. All, all the relationships are authentic. It's, it's, we prefer each other, yeah, you know, sure. it's like every honestly, we're all cooks in a way in the yeah. kitchen. And so it can be tough, but we've learned to like prefer each other and go like, man, I love that idea. Like I'm yeah. going to I'm going to take the second seat here yeah. and let that lead out. And we're learning how to do that better and better. But I think the world needs to learn how to do that better and better. Sure, and, sure. and so, yeah, we're just brothers and sisters for real. Standing here with Matt, Brandon Lake, Chandler Moore. But we've got something special for you. Right after this break, you're going to meet Chandler's father, Bishop Brian. Stay tuned.